In this video, we're going to take some time to demonstrate the interactive collision detection or quick snap feature of OpenVSP. And we'll use our nested spheres example to do this. So let's come to our small sphere and see that it's placed right here in the middle. And what we'll do is we'll start playing around with the position first and see if we can't get it to snap to a certain distance from this other sphere. So by default, target minimum distance is set to zero when you open a new model. Um, the snap to parameter may actually save because you can see that it's in this collision group. Uh, so what will happen is when we come in and we start to interactively drag these parameters, it's going to jump to whatever value this is. So let's see our range on our X value is good. So let's alt and drag to the left and it's snapped to be 0.1 from distance here. So it found whatever minimum target distance and it snapped it to that by iterating X location, just like we wanted it to. And so if we alt and drag in the other direction, you can see that it actually jumped a little bit too far and threw it all the way outside the sphere. That's not exactly what we wanted it to do. So we do just a tiny drag and it brings it back this way. So now we've hit that distance. So you can see that it's not only sensitive to how far you're trying to drag the slider interactively, it's also going to be sensitive to your range. So let's come to the middle here and take a look at something like our Z location. Now, right now I've got this scale really, really, really small. If I alt and drag to the right, and then I drag again, you can see that it's kind of doing what I want, but it took a couple of tries to get it to move in the correct direction. And sometimes it won't move at all. And so what will happen instead, if the range is too big, for example, let's make this quite a bit larger. And now as I'm dragging this around, you can see it's moving quite a lot more. And so if I alt and drag with the range set up this large, you can see that it jumped past that solution and it threw it outside the sphere. If I drag to the left, see it jumped past that one again and it came to the next available one that it could detect. So not only do you have to be careful about how far you're dragging these sliders and telling it how far you want it to search, you also have to be, uh, careful of what range on the slider you're using. So if you're finding that it's jumping around too much and it's going past solutions that you want, all you have to do is decrease the range a little bit where this moves around on a bit of a smaller scale. Then you can alt and drag in the direction that you want it to go and it'll snap right where you want it to be. The other thing that you need to be careful of, uh, particularly if you're doing things like design variables and you're manipulating the geometry, is that you're changing the surface that you're trying to detect to. And so if we set this back to say, oh, let's set Z to zero, set the X location to 0.1. So we know that that distance is already there. If we come to the A radius and increase that using the drag tool, you can see that it, it snapped in the wrong direction. And so what we need to do here is we're gonna drag it to the right and we want it to increase. So let's get it farther out there, expand the range a little bit, alt and drag to the right. And now it's manipulating this surface to where it's you know 0.1 from this side, 0.1 from this side. But the result minimum distance isn't actually 0.1. It's you know 999 whatever. So the more you get into trying to manipulate these surfaces and changing the geometry of the thing that you're trying to do a collision detection on, the more complicated this can become. Nested spheres are a really simple example of this, but imagine trying to do something like a, a nested flap geometry and you start iterating on things like cord, all sorts of things could happen. So be really careful when you're using this and use it one variable at a time and use it in a way that really makes sense.